absolutely in you. Lisa Romano here, the Breakthrough Life Coach, and I received an interesting email from somebody who's going through some pretty tough stuff, and I'd like to address it because I think that what she's going through is pretty profound and very similar to what so many of us experience. So she asked me specifically about stress. So she writes, Dear Lisa, please do a video on how to deal with stress. I have just ended a 27-year-old relationship with a narcissistic man. Well, at least I believe he was a narcissist. I know I am codependent, definitely the people pleaser for sure. Today I have to deal with stress I have been avoiding for 27 years. How can I manage my new life on my own? By the way, my children are all angry at me. My ex has swayed their perception of me. So what should I do and what should I not do? Sincerely, Clara. So thank you so much, Clara, for writing me. I totally get it. You know, when we're codependent, living below the veil, and we don't understand that we are people-pleasing, and our people-pleasing is our way of avoiding stress. What do I mean by that? And so when we are children and we come from dysfunctional homes and we are taught that our feelings don't matter, what we learn to do is minimize ourselves and we tone ourselves down so we can avoid future stress. We know that if we act out, we know that if we cry, we know that if we express ourselves, there's going to be hell to pay. There's going to be additional stress. So one of the ways that we as children learn to deal with our stress is by avoiding getting the big people or the adults in our lives upset. Because if they get upset, we're going to feel more stress. So it's a way we've learned to manage our emotions and to manage what's, hap manage what's happening outside of us as, as children. The problem is, in our unconsciousness, we continue to recreate this pattern in our adult lives. And so we attract people who are not the healthiest, and we begin to recreate this dynamic. And we are people pleasers in our marriages, in our friendships, at work, you name it. We're just people pleasers. And we don't realize that we've attracted people who cause us stress. <laughs> and we're also managing that stress the same way we did as children, by toning ourselves down, by minimizing ourselves, by not telling our truth. We don't know how to deal with our truth because it's too stressful. We don't have those coping skills. So if we don't have those coping skills, we just don't go there. We just do what we've always done, which is we minimize ourselves. So I made a short list of six things that I think you should do, Clara, and six things that I don't think you should do. So what I do think you should, let's start with the don'ts, okay? When we're trying to deal with stress, we have to understand that we have, we have placed these demands on ourselves, And when, we're deal, when it's stressful, in many of the cases, we have placed unrealistic demands on ourselves. We are trying to do things that, are, that we shouldn't be doing, or we are trying to push ourselves when we shouldn't be pushing ourselves. What I think, hurts us the most is, is in a very simplistic way to say it is we try to control stuff we can't control. And when our mind or our brains try to control things that it knows it can't control, then we can end up feeling like we're going crazy because you can't control what people think. You can't control what people do. But if your brain thinks it can or the brain thinks it should, that's maddening. So Clara, what I don't think you should do is I don't think you should try to control what you can't control, okay? So I don't think you should focus, focus on what you have lost in terms of the time invested in the marriage. Um, not, don't even focus on the fact that your kids aren't talking to you right now. Don't, even, don't focus on that. Don't sit around waiting for life to improve. That's not going to happen. Um, don't expect the world to change for you because the world will not change for you. Don't cope with your stress with alcohol or drugs or with sleeping around. That's the worst thing you can do. Those are some of the worst things that you can do. And don't isolate yourself, okay? So now let's talk about what we should do, okay? What we should do in this situation when we're dealing with stress of ending a 27-year-old marriage and now we're suddenly facing all these things that we've avoided, like being alone, taking care of ourselves financially, telling our truth, dealing with what the neighbors think, blah, 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 blah. It is unimaginable what you have to go through when you finally end a relationship like that. What you should do is accept what you can't control. So that means that you, along with trying, try to control, don't try to control what you can't, 
What you want to do is accept what you can't control. That's the opposite of that. So you can't control what people say about you once you get divorced, right? You can't control the smear campaign. If you're married to a narcissist, you're divorcing a narcissist, he is not going to be concerned with how the neighbors see you, okay? In fact, it's going to play into his narrative to minimize you and tell everybody how crazy you are. So accept what you can't control. You can't control what he says, what he does, what your children say, what your children do. Literally come into a place of surrender. Accept what you can't control. Take that expectation, that unrealistic expectation off your plate. Let your brain, your body, your soul, and your spirit being know that you can't control those things. Literally let that reality sink, sink in. I can't control those things. Give your brain a break. Um, accept your new reality. When we are dealing with the stresses of a divorce, sometimes the stress comes from us not really accepting our new reality. Us not accepting that we're all alone. Us not accepting that we really got divorced. Us not accepting that we're not going to have these futures with these people. So accept your new reality, even if it sucks. So if part of your new reality, Clara, I'm so sorry, dear one, but I believe it'll get better. The less stressed you are and the more you realize what you can control versus what you can't. If your children aren't speaking to you right now, you have to come into alignment with that reality. You have to accept that reality. And remember, that's something that you can't control. So if you wanna, if you want to know how to cope with stress, then you have to very clearly identify what you can and you cannot control. So come into alignment and acceptance of your new reality, which includes your children not speaking to you right now, you being estranged from your children. Just accept it. It is what it is for now. Accept your children have a right to their own emotions. It's very difficult. A lot of us are stressed out because we don't understand that we really don't, we don't think about it deeply enough and we really don't look at it head on. You know, what happens is we get caught up thinking that other people should like us or our feelings are hurt because people don't or we feel misunderstood and below the veil of consciousness, we have this thing going on that has us believing that we need people's validation or we need people to accept us. No, we don't. No, we don't. When you look at that stressor head on, when you understand that your children have a right to have their perception of you right now, and we as parents do not have the right to control our children's perceptions or emotions. That's very difficult to swallow, but the more you come into alignment with that fact that you don't have a right to control how your children perceive you, it'll help you feel less stressed about this new reality. And we have to appreciate that our children have a right to their own emotional experience, even if it is not a real, a true reality of us, even if it is completely in conflict to what, how we want our children to see us, we have to consciously come into alignment with the idea that our children have a right to have their emotional experience of, 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 of us at this moment in time, in this moment in time. Hopefully that will change. But right now we're talking about what we can do to eliminate stress. So coming into alignment with the fact that your kids are allowed to feel what they feel is going to help you feel less stressed. Focus on you. Don't focus on everybody else. Don't focus on what they're doing, where they're going, what, what they're saying and how they're feeling. Focus on you. Focus on, this is a point in your life where you can finally make it all about you. So get everybody off the hook. Don't focus on what everybody else is doing. Deliberately pull the focus back on yourself. Make this time in your life about you, about what you can control. Focus on your future. So instead of focusing on your losses, right, and sitting around and expecting people to, you know, come over and feel sorry for you and, you know, and make you feel better. If you're lucky, you have people like that in your life. But oftentimes, many of us don't because we've been the caretakers. We've been the pe person taking care of everybody else. And so when we, our life starts to fall apart, very oftentimes, there is no one there wanting to support us. So focus on your future. That is where your power is. Focus on your goals. Focus on your dreams. Focus about moving ahead. Literally every single day, focus on you. Focus on moving ahead. And exercise, right? So exercise is a great way to help eliminate stress in your life. 
So there's a lot of static energy that gets built up in the body when we are ruminating over things we can't control, when we are facing fears that we've always been afraid of having to deal with and suddenly we're dealing with them, like the one of being, like the fear of being alone. Meditating. Meditation helps slow down the mental chatter. This is another thing that you can do, Clara, now that you find yourself on this new stressful path. So coping with exercise and meditation versus alcohol and, you know, drugs or caffeine or sex, you know, which is random people, you know, things like that are just going to make matters worse. So find healthy coping skills, okay? And also, instead of isolating yourself, reach out for support. So that means if you have to go to a CODA meeting or an Al-Anon meeting or a woman's meeting or if you have a group of friends that you know, um, maybe even online support, join Facebook groups for women in your situation. I have a great online Facebook group, over 5,000 members strong right now, very proud of that group. Um, and we all support one another and the members are fantastic and it's moderated by people who have taken my 12 week breakthrough coaching program and my master class. So do what you can to make sure that your mind understands very, very clearly what it can control and what it can't control. I cannot tell you the, the, how miraculous that, that line of thought can be when you are going through a new life experience, which is life-changing experience like a divorce. So oftentimes stress is coming from us thinking that we should be controlling things that we don't have a right to control. And so Clara, I hope this video has, has helped you get clear about what you can control, what you can't control, and about some of the things you can do to help you deal with stress, and some of the things that you should avoid doing as you undergo these amazing life changes, which I believe will help you find your authentic self and become the person that you are meant to be. So good for you, Clara. I know this is a tough time in your life, but you know, as someone who's been there, I really respect your ability to move ahead, move ahead and to face these challenges head on. Thank you so much for writing me.